but I, I, I wanted to enjoy the moment today. Um, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to or we wanted it to, but yet, you know, we, we, we can learn from it. And I think we, ha we have to realize that nobody's going to lay down. Uh, I didn't expect that. I know a lot of other guys didn't expect that, but it's still going to come down to us executing the given plan. Um, but for me, I am excited what the future holds, and it's going to start with us, you know, tomorrow and going over the film and locking in and doing that as best as we could. Cam Newton's first game back in Carolina after getting the big win over the Arizona Cardinals. It looked like it was going to go well for the Panthers. It ultimately did not. Cam had three total touchdowns. He, he ran to the logo in the middle of the field. Shades of Terrell Owens, although Owens was doing it to disrespect the star, Newton did it to respect right. the Panther logo, but uh, he didn't rip off his helmet and get a 15-yard penalty, which I guess is good. But he can still move. He can still get it done. It just felt like it was going to be his day. It had to be jarring to the Panthers to get that vibe back and the excitement that Cam Newton brings. But ultimately, doesn't matter if the other team scores more points, Mike. Well, it does. And going forward, I mean, and, and Cam had talked about it, Matt Rule had talked about it, is, you know, a two-minute offense. That, that's kind of a whole other part to the playbook. And Cam hasn't been there that long, right? And this is a different offense uh, that, that he's running. So there's a little more to it in the two-minute, which happens at obviously a, a, a quicker, faster rate. And the things you have to pick up, even Cam said, I got to get in that playbook even more on it. And it's tough because you got to learn a whole offense and then, obviously, there's that two-minute part of it. So, you know, that, that's just another aspect of it. People think when you learn the whole offense, you know, it's, it's everything, including the two minutes. Some, some comes a little slower than the others, or some is more studied early on than that part of it because, you, you know, the two-minute is in the two-minute. You need a whole rest of the game, obviously, to play. And it was, you know, two touchdowns and, again, a, a high completion percentage out of him, and you didn't see any – Anything from the shoulder or from the ankle, he looked good. You know, even though he's in his 30s, if he's healthy, he's still one incredible athlete uh, that can do something with the ball. So I'm with you. I thought it was going their way. But as I mentioned earlier, Taylor Heineke has, has the highest rated game of his career. Picked a great time to have it. And Carolina needed it at the end, needed it in that two-minute drill. And it's something that, that needs to be worked on, not for the sake of Cam not being able to produce in that moment, but Cam just not being there long enough to pick up all aspects of that playbook. Yeah, and that's a great point. And they have some more time to get things figured out. They're at Miami this weekend. Then their week off comes in week 13. Not an easy stretch run, though. They got the Falcons, then at the Bills, then Bucks at Saints at Bucks. They got Tampa Bay, two of the last three games. By the way, one of my favorite stats, as I've said before, Cam Newton all time. 2-0 against Tom Brady. Uh, that may change this year, but, but we'll see. And if he stays healthy, they're going to be in every game. And as he learns that offense, they're going to be better. The defense is good. Wasn't good enough yesterday. But, but they're still very much alive, even at 5-6. and six, Very much alive for a playoff spot in the NFC. There's going to be, Mike, some good teams that don't make it. Maybe a team that would have been good enough to catch fire if they had just gotten in that won't make it. There are going to be some very good football teams just left out this year, and uh, it's all going to be determined in the scrum that's to come over the final seven weeks. Well, I think it's amazing now we're looking at six lost teams that can be in it in the NFC, right? The number, you know, Washington's a six lost team now as well as Carolina, you know, and, and, and they played well. well. The problem with that is with six loss, you, you're pushing toward the well, they can't really be a 500 anymore, but one win below, one win above, that puts you at, you know, you're, in, you're just consistent enough to be a mid-level team. But who, who finally will take over, you know, in this situation in looking at the playoffs? The Eagles have six losses, but they look really good right now. They're starting to actually, oh, my God, run the ball. You know, so they're playing well. So you look at the six loss teams, while none of them are in the playoffs right now, they're only a loss removed from it. With a, with a ways to go. So while I, and I love showing where we are now in the playoff picture, but boy, how that thing can be jumbled up in the next couple of weeks.
a lot of cross-pollination that's going to happen as teams play each other and teams will fade and teams will rise, and it's staying healthy. It's having depth for when you do have inevitable injuries. It's avoiding that random lightning strike of a key COVID positive. And also, we didn't have many of them this week, but for every team that gets screwed by a horrible officiating call, there's a team that benefits from it. And maybe that's the difference for a team getting into the playoffs and maybe not getting into the playoffs. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.